So this week we've got a guest chef cooking for us. Chef Jake Warhurst from Australia, came here from the Caribbean where we met and worked together. What are you cooking? So today we're gonna to do a tomato and peach salad with a caramelized Prosecco vinaigrette. Amazing. A little bit of stracciatella that's gonna be seasoned with toasted coriander seed, a little bit of olive oil. Amazing. Easy. First, we're just gonna remoir some shallots here. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know, it's like, this is a salad that you wanna be talking while you make it. Yeah. So that's why I'm here, having a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chatting with your mates. So this shallot just brings a little bit of texture to the dressing. And we also give it a bit of cracked garlic as well. Mm -hmm. And that's just gonna go in as it rests, just to bring that forward a bit, elevate it ever so slightly. So now it's done, we're gonna get on our, our caramel. We're just gonna cover the base of this pan yep. with white sugar. So and you then, put a little bit of water in with the sugar? Yeah. And what does that do? Well, it just dissolves, just makes sure everything Especially with induction, you know, like it's it all heats up very evenly throughout the right, yeah, the yeah, caramelization yeah. of the sugars. So it's to so it's to dissolve the sugar and then bring it up to a caramel, so it's less likely to crystallize. Exactly. So while that's going, we're going to chop about tomatoes. Got some beautiful <laughs> tomatoes here from um, Barrow Market. Market. Yeah, that was lovely. I like thick cut tomatoes. You know, like yeah. I like to, I like to have the meatiness. I like I think it plates better and just you love to see it. Right, that's yeah, what we're here. We're here for the tomatoes, yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice thick slices. Yeah. We've got yellow tomatoes, we've got nice big um, oxide tomatoes there, and of course, nice little green ones as well. We're going to bring a nice bit of acidity as well to the dish. Would you go towards a big tomato for this, or cherry tomatoes, or anything that's good? or um, Anything that's good, you know, it's it's all about the flavour, but yeah. I personally love the structure of, of these large tomatoes, the dressing and stuff, especially like the shallots, they're going to feel those little holes, those little pockets of the tomato. Yeah, lovely. And it's just going to be banging. Yeah, it's nice. Nice. So, where, where'd the idea for this dish come from? My mum always grows tomatoes. Yes. Right? Nice. And then my mum always has Prosecco in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> instead of a white wine dressing one day, I looked up to the top of mum's cupboard, there she was, sparkling in there. I'm going to crack that with Prosecco. So, it's important that it goes a little bit further than you think. You want it to get past that just amber colour. You want it to get like quite bitter, mm. and then, or else, it won't dissolve properly. So Prosecco goes in. That dark, deep sugar is almost giving a bitterness to the It is. To it's, the thing, yeah, to the dressing. Right. It's got sugar in it, and you really want to, like, extend that flavor, like, bring all the different, like, flavor profiles into this dish. We've got the umami of the tomatoes, we've got the beautiful swings of these peaches, you know, and it's, it's just, you'll see once you make mm. it. Yeah, it's yeah. absolutely banging. So once that Prosecco's in, it's gonna reduce. In goes the shallots. They're just gonna start to cook out slowly there, but they're still gonna retain a lot of texture because they don't have a lot of time as this cooks down. So is there any sort of, like, attached heritage to this dish? Is it, like, more Italian, Mediterranean, like, is it's, it? Yeah, it's definitely Italian. I'm not sure yeah. if I could possibly say. That's uh, classic Italian on uh, on TV or on YouTube or anything. Yeah, yeah. I can't probably copy the flag for that. But this is, I love Italian food, you know. Like, yeah, and it's just nice. Yeah. You know? yeah. As I said, like there's a little bit of nod, nod to my mum with the prosecco here. Yeah, there. yeah, it's, lovely. It's, it's nice. It's nice. Lovely. So this is going to reduce down. We're going to bring this down basically to a syrup. And then nice. once syrup, once we brought that down to a syrup. We've just got a nice white wine vinegar here. It doesn't really matter. You can use red wine, you can use white wine, you can use chardonnay, you can use whatever you want. But today we're just using white wine. The heroes here today are the peaches and other tomatoes. Garlic. In she goes. So just gonna let that come down and we're gonna finish slicing our peaches and stuff. Yeah. So we've got a blood peach and a white peach. This dressing is quite acidic, right? So you don't want to have really thin slices because you don't want them to go limp. You want them to have that texture and that white. And it look much nicer. Yeah. Keeping everything a little bit thick so it's got a bit of integrity. Exactly. You know it's there. Yeah. yeah. No one likes soggy fruit. No. Do you know what I mean? We're just going to quickly season our stracciatella. So stracciatella is basically torn or pulled mozzarella curds. Yeah. And it's just seasoned with a little bit of heavy cream. Yeah. And a little bit of salt. Okay, That's nice. it. Yeah. But it's a beautiful cheese. I absolutely love it. You'll find it on the inside of burrata. Sometimes it is a little bit hard to get a hold of. Yeah. Nice. But yeah. Go find someone who's got it and buy it off them straight away. Because <laughs> <laughs> it probably will go missing. Yeah. So this here is just a little bit of um, coriander seed that we just toasted very quickly in a pan and then blitz up. A good little pinch, you don't want it too much. And why coriander with that sort of like Italian or roast? You would think like more basil or parsley, but I think coriander just brings like a really nice earthiness that balances with the acidity and with, with everything. For me, it just works. Yeah. But you could substitute this with something else. Even fresh lemon zest if you didn't have coriander seed. Yeah. It's absolutely banging. A little bit of salt on top and then a little bit of fresh olive oil. That's gonna sit there and chill out. Just before we plate, all right, yeah. we need to season these tomatoes <laughs> and kind of get them macerating. I'm gonna go two red, two green, two yellow, and mm -hmm. then 
because I'm a bit of a greedy, greedy boy. Greedy boy. Okay. Extra right. piece, extra piece for me, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Salt and pepper. Yeah. In my humble opinion. Yeah. The coarser the pepper, the better it is. I like the heat. It tastes good. I like to see the flavor. Yeah, nice. You know, and I think everyone does. When you see flavor on plate on a plate. It's easier to find it in your, on your palate. Yeah, I personally believe. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So it's almost like you're giving people the hint of what it's going to taste like before they taste it. Exactly. So they can gear up yeah. their taste buds. You eat with your eyes, mm. which is why not your glass. You look so tasty, <laughs> man. <laughs> and if yeah. you don't season your tomatoes before you make a salad, yeah, you put you in the bin. Then I don't want to hear about it. <laughs> to be honest, you know. And I think that's fair enough. Yeah. Just getting a little bit of this vinegar over these tomatoes. And yeah, these, these big oxalate tomatoes, as I said earlier, they have all those little, those little pockets where the flavor is just gonna sit in there and hopefully stay there. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Give the stretch tail on the bottom of the plate. You can plate this however you want, but this is how I'm gonna do it. So today to get these ingredients, we've got the tomatoes. We went to our local market. I'm very lucky that my local market is Borough Market, but when you go to your local market, when you go to your local green grocers or fruit suppliers, you gotta get in there, you gotta feel and smell the vegetables or fruits that you're buying. So if you're trying to recreate a salad like this, please, please, please go the extra mile and buy that slightly more expensive tomato, that slightly more expensive peach, because those flavors that you're getting from those ingredients will be all the difference when you're making a salad as simple as this. And then go and get your best looking Aussie mate. Yeah. And he'll do it for you. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two nice big pieces of this gorgeous oxide tomato. It's got the pepper, the salt, yeah. the coriander seed. All of it's there, it's just waiting. Peaches for me are on top. And then, I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of extra dressing, and then we're gonna finish it with that beautiful olive oil and a little bit of fresh basil. Always tear your basil. Yeah. Don't chop it. Don't let the flavor hide in the board. This is it. Okay, cool. Um, peach and tomato salad, caramelized protective vinaigrette, stretched over, and toasted coriander seed. All right, cheers, mate. Cheers. Lovely, right, thanks for having me. Yeah, lovely to have you. Pleasure. Long way to go for a glass of Prosecco, isn't it? Finally, cheerio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, visually stunning for the time of year as well. So this is exactly what you want. Stunning, mate. Yeah. It was really good. Lovely. It has, like, in Australia, we eat we eat a lot lighter. Right? Yeah. Like, it's hot, man. Yeah. And, like, these kind of flavors, they just come together so quickly. You know, you, you, you could do a simpler version of this salad easily. Mm. You could just do tomatoes and, and peaches and, and just a little bit of seasoning with the structure. It doesn't have to be this complex, and they would just absolutely sing yeah. together as well. But yeah, taking it a little bit further, you know, especially to impress your mates, you know what I mean? Like, you say the word prosecco vinaigrette to one of your to one of your mates, and mm. you know we'll see who's got. We'll see yeah, who's got, yeah, you know, yeah, we'll see who's got the the star of the dinner party. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just nice, isn't it? It's nice when it's hot. So when did you first start cooking? Mm -hmm. I started when I was eighteen. I was um, a failing musician. Yeah, I didn't make any money being a musician. <laughs> <laughs> and I found, I found a beautiful creative outlet being a chef. Um, yeah. And I've never turned back since. You know, I, yeah. I absolutely adore what I do, and like I love all the places that I've. And able to go and like people that I'm able to meet and you know yeah. what more yeah. could you want in life man? Yeah, you know, yeah, sitting, yeah. sitting here with your mates drinking yeah, that's, that's what, what I about. So so creativity brought you to cooking. It did. And what sort of stuff do you get out of it now? I I love learning, you know, like I learned loads off you when we were together and it's just that just that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's, yeah, it, it's it's yeah. just that progression for me, you know, like yeah. in cookery you can never know everything. Mm. A constant search for something that's gonna be Spectacular, you know. A lot of people don't realize this little sensation that you get. But if yeah. you cook at a dinner party and you walk out to that table and no one's making a noise, yeah, you've done your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If everyone's tucking in so much so that they ignore conversation. Yeah, that's what I want. You want you all to be quiet. <laughs> eat my food. Eat my food. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's just it's just a celebrate. Like I have a big family. You're you know you're very family oriented. You yeah, know your yeah. nanny stuff like that. It's just the best feeling, isn't it? Yeah, you know, yeah. Cooking for the people that you love and. And yeah. stuff like that. For me as well, I think like cooking's great, service is great. When you when you cook something for someone, you get that initial feedback of what's going yeah. on for them. Yeah, do you know yeah. what I mean? And it can be progressive. You mm -hmm. can take other people's opinions on food on board. Definitely, definitely. Do you know definitely. what I mean? Because when you don't, you know, know you're either the best if that exists. Yeah, I don't or, think so. No. Do you know what I mean? You're on, you're yeah. on the fail. You're on a, you're, on a, you're on a failing path mm -hmm. to to become not very good. Yeah. Um, having other people collaborate, um, have influence on your food as you meet those people through your exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think it's one of the magical parts of it. It is for sure. Styles, cuisines. Do you know what I mean? Flavor combinations. Definitely. Yeah. It's 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 literally a blank canvas for you. It's you you're constantly on a blank canvas, aren't you? Yeah. You can go anywhere you want, anywhere you want. Yeah. You know if if. 
if you want to continue to be progressive and you know like I would never call this a classic Italian salad <laughs> Wait, <laughs> for, uh, yeah, you know like, like uh, for, 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 for fear of an actual Italian coming in yeah, 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 <laughs> but yeah. um yeah, no, I, think, I think um I think this would this would make most Italians pretty happy to mm. be honest mm. yeah. yeah right so, so I hope you've enjoyed it man it's been awesome being here mm. absolute pleasure that, yeah it's been amazing get in good time, yeah. Thank you.